Hello and welcome to another unsponsored and unbiased review of the Heusingfeld Ultimate Plus pedals. First I'm going to talk about the throttle and the brake and the general differences between the old Ultimate and the new Ultimate set. The throttle now has a new coated spring which seems to have a tad smaller diameter and more windings. The spring is now virtually silent compared to the old one, but the dampers of the pedal still make the same fluid squishy noise which I'm going to let you hear later on. They removed the preload sliding slot on the back of the pedals for the dampers and it now only has one fixed position in the back. There's only one slot left in the pedal where you can slide the damper up and down in the pedal itself. There's also one for the spring. The higher you move the spring or damper the more effort it will take to press the throttle. This is one way of adjusting the forces it takes to press the pedal. Of course you can also still adjust the preload on the spring to make it heavier. But there is a limit to that, especially if you use max travel on the pedal. You can adjust the travel on the rod behind the pedal with the blue hose on it. Also the spring still needs to be turned in the correct position so that it doesn't rub against the side of the housing of the throttle. Especially with max travel or a lot of preload on the spring. They do use a spring with a tiny smaller diameter this time, but it doesn't fully fix it. But you can turn the spring in such a way that when it compresses, it doesn't bend to the side when compressed, but up or down, where there is no pedal housing to hit. When you turn the spring in the correct way, it will stay in the correct position though, so it won't be a problem. Now let's talk about the brake. The brake also has some small upgrades compared to the old Ultimates, with a few improvements, so there's less wear and tear. The black brake stack rubber dampers, actually called bushings, are a new compound and there are two sets of three black bushings and they have soft and hard markings on them. The soft ones go up to a maximum of 100 kilograms of load in the smart control, probably because of too much wear and tear and deformation of the rubbers. If you want to use more than 100 kilograms, up to 140 you need the hard rubbers. Of course there comes more into play with that. You can also choose the hard rubbers because of the feel and travel you want. But the new black bushings are quite a bit bigger. Not only because of the outer diameter is a, a bit bigger. But also because the, the inner diameter is smaller. So the rod that goes through it is also smaller. So there's more material to push against. I guess this is mainly done so there's less rubbing and friction against the rod. That was the biggest problem when using the white bushings on the old Ultimates, especially when you wanted to press a lot of kilograms. They would deform so much on the rod that it would actually be very hard to press a lot of kilograms. With the green bushings it was actually a lot easier to press a lot of kilograms. I don't know to what extent this is with the new black soft ones, but it might still happen, maybe to a lesser point. I, I haven't tried that out, but I wouldn't even try the softs. The hard black ones already have plenty of travel with a stack of three hard ones and I would say that's the sweet spot to start from. I think and recommend you would never want to go any softer on the brake pedal than that anyway. Then the travel would be so much you can't take it serious as a sim racing set for driving race cars. It would be like a way to soft pedal in your mom's grocery getter. That's nothing you would want to race with. Once you get used to it, you might even want to start removing bushings and add solid rings to get closer to real firm race cars or formula cars. Personally I still like a bit of travel so I keep the three black ones and the preload spring, which might be comparing to two or three green bushings on the old Ultimates. The pedal feels great and smooth but not really different from the old one with two or three green bushings. The old one did need a drop of oil on the rod from time to time to keep it going better smooth. We will have to see how it goes with the new Ultimates, but I hope it will be more maintenance free and it will never need a drop of oil. Now let's talk about mounting. These pedals should only be mounted on rigs with low seating positions, because the adjustments of the throttle pedal angle is very limited. The pedals only go from slightly laid back to straight and even to tilt it forward. Of course you could try to turn the nut loose on the rod that goes into the throttle pedal and screw it in as much as possible, but I think the gains will be also still very limited to get it more laid back even with the thread all the way in. Now let me show you the tolerances and sounds the pedal set makes when you press the throttle and brake. 
watch the output very closely. It looks like there's input lag on the output when you see the direct inputs on the left compared to the, the right bar. This is not a scaling problem. The green bar should actually be in front of the blue one at this point of the picture. Here in this snapshot you can actually see it's running behind. Now let's listen to some beautiful pedal noises. Now let's talk about the most anticipated feature, the smart control. This is the Heusingveld smart control for the Ultimate Plus pedals. Here you can see your inputs. And easily adjust them. You can add that zone. Usually uh, you do this uh, for the brake. Throttle is nice to have uh, easy full uh, throttle and maybe if you relax your foot a bit on the straight you don't lose full but also for the brake in eye racing you, you put a tiny dead zone so the brake doesn't drag but now you can edit in here so you don't have to uh, do all the pedal holding or editing joy callip files in my documents so that's become a bit easier by default the hard rubbers are installed and there's the a max of 140 kilograms If you put on soft, it goes to 100, maybe it's done for the deformation of the rubbers and the wear and tear on them. But uh, I use 100, that's enough for me. Uh, it sounds crazy, but actually in, in game probably the wheels lock already at 60-70%, uh, so you have more precision over the whole range, otherwise it's way too easy to lock the brakes if you just barely press the pedal and you only have a 60 kilogram load cell it's already locking at like 30 kilograms so it's only like you're just touching the pedal so that's why I always recommend ultimate pedals or pedals with a, a max force of at least 100 kilos you can also save your settings if you have like a, a very specific car but I tend to use linear on uh, all my cars in the same settings. Maybe if you use uh, another sim which is a bit more arcadey and it's uh, not, not fun to press 100 all the time, you can just easily put it on 50 or 70s or whatever you want and then it's much easier. It works on the fly in the game so it works immediately. That's uh, no recalibration, it, uh, it works. And what is also nice is that there's no more raw resolution when calibrating in iRacing. You just do it in the application and then you just press it fully, the brake and the throttle, and then it just fools the game so you have full resolution of 0 to 4095. And then, now finally the conclusion. It are very sturdy stainless steel pedals with good tolerances. The brake pedal goes up to 140 kg of force. There are no problems when driving it hard in race sims, even though the crazy way of me showing you the tolerances is very extreme to show you just how well it's really made, as I always do. Even though there, there's some slight wobble, it has no negative effects on driving with them in-game, although the brake tolerances are better than the throttle. The smart control is nice and makes it a bit easier and more user friendly to set it up in iRacing. It's nice to have the ability to have some curves on the throttle and brake, but this will also make it that people will make different settings for each car and each sim, where this is totally not needed, since they should work on themselves first instead of trying to find settings to make them faster, which is just a placebo, like having different force feedback settings for each car. 
These features are only nice when you are already consistently driving fast lap times close to the best people out there, instead of just adding new problems which they think are gains. Now I want to talk about the competition and the price. The Ultimate Plus pedal set is a bit behind its competitors and hasn't seen as much updates and improvements as I would have liked. Multiple competitors have ball bearings now with better tolerances and smoother movements and better shielded cables. Also some are CNC machined and made out of more solid parts instead of puzzle pieces holded together with bolts. And then now the price. The two pedal set Ultimate Plus pedals are very expensive compared to their competitors. 1079 euros compared to the 549 of the VRS pedals which are actually very similar in specs with a brake pedal force up to 120 kg. Sprint pedals are already 599 and only have 60 kg of load cell. So I would say Hosingfeld is pricing itself out of the market there, especially versus the VRS pedals, which are probably closer to the Ultimates. And also don't forget the completely CNC machined Simtrax pedal sets, which are only sold as three pedal sets though, so you have to compare it for 1175 versus the Hosingfeld three pedal set, which is 1329 euros. So there is strong competition now. I guess they are still hanging back on their proven name and reliability which is good. But I am interested to see how the market is going to evolve. Talking about reliability, I have one thing to say there. The square that holds the brake stack is still behind a ever so small ridge of like 1mm that's holding the stack only because of the preload spring. If there is anything in that stack or mounting that goes a bit loose, there is a possibility for it to pop out. Just ask Max Verstappen. I am really amazed they didn't change the design or give it more meat so it wouldn't pop out that easily when there is no tension on the stack. So why did I buy the set? Well, it's probably still one of the best sets out there and it's proven, so you know what you're buying. And it just got updated. The other sets might look nice on pictures and paper. But no one really knows how good they really are, especially with all those behind the scenes sponsored free sets given to reviewers that are going to tell how amazing it is without wanting to be too critical and really telling everything. If you have made it this far in the review, I would really like to thank you for watching. Please like, subscribe and share my video, that would help me a lot. And also if you would like to buy me a coffee or something, it's always nice to support me at paypal.me slash skymol. There will be a link in the video description. That's basically everything I wanted to say. Thank you for watching and bye bye.